In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns, and all of our beautiful and faithfuls who are with us in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you, guide you, protect you, and deliver you from the snares of the enemy, whether it be visible and or invisible, in his mighty name, amen. The gospel of today is according to St. John and the ninth chapter. The Lord Jesus was walking with his, the, with his 12 apostles and they came across a man who was born blind on the wayside begging. The disciples stopped and they asked the Lord Jesus and said, whose sin was it for this man to be born blind? Was it his sin or his parents for him to be born in this way? The Lord said it is neither his nor his parents, but this man has been placed here today for the glory of God. This man has been placed here today for the glory of God. If it was to do with sin, then the disciples' question was made wrongly because there is no need as far as humanity is concerned to ask whose sin was it, his or his parents, because all humanities have fallen into sin. Therefore, this blind man is the representation of the entire human race. This is the nature, this is the fallen nature of the human race. All of us are this blind man. All of us are born blind. And since he's talking about blindness, which is to do with the eye, biblically speaking, the eye represents knowledge. Wherever you see in the Holy Bible, the word I being mentioned, replace that word with the word of knowledge. So what was the Lord trying to convey here? What profound message is he trying to send across to all of us. The Lord says, or is saying this very moment, there is one kind of knowledge that leads you to blindness, but there is another kind of knowledge that leads you to enlightenment. There is one kind of knowledge that leads you to absolute death, and there is another kind of knowledge that will lead you to eternal life. Since the fall of humanity, since we walked away from the true divine God, every knowledge we've gained led us to being spiritually blind. With all the knowledge of the world put together, it can only take you to the ultimate achievement and that is the tangible realm. With all the knowledge of the world put together, it can only lead you to the ultimate achievement which is the tangible realm which we live in. And what is the knowledge of the tangible realm? To find out what is good and what is evil. And the ultimate level of this tangible realm's knowledge is to do with the intellect. 
you have you may have heard us say this before you know we say so, so many words during the day with in, a, in our normal daily dialect with people we meet with people we know yet we don't pay attention sometimes to the words we say a good example of this the word understand how often do we use this word I believe a lot especially when we want to be stubborn about something I understand okay you don't need to tell me nothing if I get off my case I understand you don't teach me I was just born naturally taught the word understand is a compounded word two words in one under the stand that's what it means literally it's under the stand when we say I understand I'm really saying to myself I can only get I can only comprehend I can only fathom what is under the stand of my intellectual level anything above the stand I'll say uh -huh. I don't know doesn't make sense all of a sudden the greatest scientist of all the greatest physicist and biologist and all those experts in the scientific field they will come up with this genius word it's a phenomena supernatural there is no explanation for it well there is no explanation for it as far as your head is concerned but there is explanation for it when you go above the stand my dear friend because all your intellect can fathom is under the stand which is this realm you cannot surpass that because God put that limit not you not the Big Bang and not your uncle the gorilla in Taronga Zoo but when we come to the divine God God will always operate above the stand. God will never operate under the stand because everything that is under the stand is within the human grasp. And as long as you and I can do it, God will never interfere. The only time God will interfere is when it is impossible for humanity to do, then God will come in and that is above the stand supernatural a phenomena now in chapter 9 of John the beloved the Lord Jesus meets this blind man born blind and this is the spiritual blindness because the eye is the lamp of the body the Lord Jesus says and the eye represents the light and that light is knowledge because we get enlightened when we receive knowledge and through knowledge we begin to understand <laughs> did you get that one understand when you read in the book of Proverbs which teaches you wisdom earthly wisdom one of the books of King Solomon there is Proverbs there is Ecclesiastes and there is Song of Solomon these are referred to be, to King Solomon when you read in the book of Proverbs you will find three words always mentioned together knowledge understanding wisdom knowledge understanding wisdom their cousins they walk together what is knowledge information what is understanding comprehension what is wisdom application knowledge information understanding comprehension wisdom application the very first thing you receive is information 
When somebody says something, when you read something, when you listen to something, what you're gaining? Information. The information is the very first level. What we, you need to do in order to understand the information, you need to start searching, researching, studying, following through, going deeper and deeper to come to this level where you begin to comprehend what you heard. Because hearing only and stopping at that level will do you no good. In the simple English language, it goes through this ear out the other. That is information. Oh, I came to church and it was a nice sermon, but it wasn't for me. The guy was doing great, that good old looking bishop. That is information through this ear out the other. What have you achieved? Nothing. What have you gained? Nothing. What changed in you? Nothing. How many years have you been going to church? How come you haven't changed? Is it God who has changed? Never. I have, not God. I chose to stop at the level of information, knowledge. But if you want to go a step further, then work hard to begin to comprehend the information you received. When you begin to comprehend what you've received as information, then there is only one last step to make it happen. You need to apply what you comprehended. So if I receive information, knowledge, and then I understand, comprehend this knowledge and stop at that, it will do me no good. But I need, once I understood what I heard, I need to apply it in order for the change to happen in my life. Application is wisdom. I'll tell you someone who has information, who has comprehension, but no application. With all love and respect, I don't mean it's just always doctors pop up when I talk about a smoking doctor. <laughs> you see, the doctor studied for years. I love you, doctors. Oh, I love you, man. I've got my sweetheart doctor here. The doctor studied for years, and I, I, I know it's very hard. It's a lot of hard work. So I've studied for years. I came to know how the body functions, what is beneficial, what is not. And then I fathomed all that information. I, I began to understand and comprehend it all. And then I knew through understanding the information, smoking is not good for my body. But knowing that I still smoke, I didn't apply what I learned, what I fathomed, what I comprehended. <laughs> no good. <laughs> Starts coughing after a little while. <laughs> Cough it out, baby. <laughs> This world gives you information. Now, please, I need your attention. This world gives you information. And if there has been ever a time where information exploded, it has been nothing but the 21st century. Knowledge has exploded. Technology advancement in every field, unheard of. Have, hasn't been seen in the history of mankind what humanity is achieving today. They are modifying viruses, gain of function in the Wuhan laboratory, Mr. Shanghai. They are able to manipulate this virus and modify it. To make it a weapon of war against humanity and call it pandemic to bring lockdowns and venomous jabs into people's arms. Knowledge, understanding the knowledge, but that knowledge is godless. 
The knowledge is godless. Wisdom is missing. Wisdom is missing. With knowledge you gain love. But with wisdom is the only way to protect that love. Otherwise you lose it. The human race of the 21st century's problem is wisdom application. What leads a human to be spiritually blind? Sin. And what is sin? Doing something that God is not pleased with. That God disapproves of. That is against his will, against his wish, against his being. When we do things that are against God, we are gaining knowledge that will lead us to spiritual blindness. And when we are living in absolute blindness, we can never tell our right hand from our left. We'll begin to call light darkness and darkness light. And this is what's happening exactly in our time and age. So all the knowledge, all the comprehension of that knowledge led humanity to be geniuses Talking, enforcing, embedding the word human rights. It's all about human rights. And the Western world is doing a great job with that. But look at this knowledge that humanity has gained. I heard the story, I'm not sure, I think some people say it's true. So all this knowledge and all this understanding that it's all about human rights, human rights, not God's rights. Look where, it, where this knowledge led. Someone in Japan decided to be a dog. Finally, his wish was fulfilled. Congratulations. Ho, ho, ho. I don't mind having that dog for a moment. So is this the geniuses of the human race? Is this the human rights that you've been seeking? Is this the knowledge that you've been boastful of? Look at us, what we are capable of doing, what we are capable of achieving. Look at us in the medical field, in the scientific field, in every field, in the military field. Look at us, look at our achievements. Geniuses, geniuses. From a human, you turned into an animal. Why? Because any knowledge that is outside of God's is blindness, but not a physical, no, it's a spiritual blindness. And what does this spiritual blindness lead you to? Chapter 11 of John. Lazarus in the grave, rotted, dead. Spiritual blindness will lead you only to one place, eternal death, lost forever. When a beloved of ours departs from this world, this is not death. We call them the departed souls. In the Lord's language, Aramaic, Syriac, we call it, we call that person Anida. It derives from the verb Anad. When somebody is Anida, that means he has departed. The church fathers call those who leave this realm into the next realm, they call them the departed souls, not the dead, the departed. Now who departs? Not the dead, the living. When you go to the airport, there's two signs, departure, arrival. 
If you want to get to heaven or if you wish to arrive to heaven, you need to depart, my sweetheart. You can't have this world and the next. You can't have the church and the club. You can't have the divine wine and the other wine. You cannot. Either the light or the darkness, either being able to see or blind. You can't have both worlds. Cannot. But who travels? The living. Who departs? The living. Not the dead. The dead are dead. I was going to say a joke, but I'll leave it later. <laughs> the living who depart. Bless you. The living who depart, my beloveds. But you see, when we do it outside of God, we end up being spiritually blind. That spiritual blindness will lead us to one place, perdition, hell, eternal death. I am rotted in the grave, dead, gone. But look at the Lord Jesus, all glory to his holy name and mighty name. Look at it. Chapter 9, the blind men. Chapter 11 of John, Lazarus in the grave, dead. Between 9 and 11, chapter 10, Jesus comes and says, I am the good shepherd. Who, put, who lays his life down for his beloved. I came to take your place. I am the good shepherd who puts his life for his sheep. But then what does he say about his sheep? My sheep hear my voice and follow me. They do not go after the str a stranger's voice, but they come after me because they recognize my voice. When you hear something, what are you receiving? Information. Whose role is it to send you the information? God. Whose role by grace is it to comprehend the information? You and I. If we don't work hard at what we hear, what we receive, it'll be through this ear or the other. So when you go to church, when you go to a Bible preach, when you go to a lecture, when you listen to a lecture, or whether in person or through some social media platform, it's not about just gaining information. It's not just about, oh, this nice, this was nice, this was now not that bad. No, it's about what information are you after? What are you trying to gain? What are you trying to comprehend? Because later on it will be asked of you to apply it into your life. The Lord says, love one another. Yeah, that was nice. I heard that. Okay, I understood that. Okay, what are you doing about it? I will, love, I will never love that guy over there. Never, never, never. That Assyrian with a big nose, never I love that man. Oh, there's nobody there anyway. <laughs> so all the information I got, got me nowhere. The Lord says, unless your eyes are open, you can never live. And the only one who can open your spiritual eye is God who art in heaven, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Who is the daily bread? The Son, the beloved Son of the Father. It's the Son who is the daily bread. Why am I asking the heavenly Father for the Son? to be given to me daily. 
because the sun is the light of the world. John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. And what is light? The eye open. What is the eye? Knowledge. When you gain this heavenly knowledge, then you are living. Then you can see. There are some people who are physically blind, but they see much more than those who are physically open eyes. The naked eye does not determine whether you are blind or not. It is the spiritual eye that determines that. It's the spiritual eye. And this spiritual eye is knowledge, but this knowledge is above the stand, came from heaven, not under the stand, from earth. What is of, what is of earth is earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. You chase the world, you'll end up being nothing. But when you chase after the Lord Jesus, then you end up being everything. Gain his knowledge, you will see. And when you see, you are living. Why the sun? came to open my eyes because unless we are the sons of God we can never claim that we can see unless we are the sons of God you can never say I can see a slave cannot see a slave follows order what's the difference between a son and a slave one thing, the slave works to be paid. The son gets paid to work. The slave works to be paid. The son gets paid to work. Why? Because the son is the inheritor. What is mine is yours. My house is your house. My throne is your throne. Since you are my children, whatever I have as God, it is all yours because you are the rightful inheritors of your father's kingdom. This man was left here for the glory of God. What is the glory of God? Do you know why God created the human being? To be glorified. Think about it with me for a moment. He has only one son, the begotten, the beloved of his father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The son of God is God. But this son is the only one who glorifies him in the Trion God. The Son glorifies the Father. God the Father wanted more sons, more children. So He invested in His only Son through Him to make millions and billions like the stars of heaven. If you can count the stars, then you'll be able to count how many saints there are in heaven. Good luck counting the stars in heaven. This is how many saints there are in paradise and later on in the father's house on this and the second coming now god created angels in the very beginning before the human race angels glorify god however that glory is not like the sun because angels are not his sons they are his servants and when a servant glorifies his master the master is not glorified. Why? Because 
This is the least the servant can do for the master. He is obligated to glorify his master. Whether he likes it or not, he must glorify the master. Otherwise, he cannot stay and remain serving the master if he doesn't glorify him. But the son is the only way for the father to be glorified. Why? Because the son is free. Is not forced to love his dad. Is not obligated to love his dad. Is not threatened to love his dad. The son, since he is the son, then the son is free. And when he comes freely to express his love for his dad, it is then and then only the father is glorified. Because it was done freely, willingly, the son chose to say to his dad, I love you. The son chose to say to his dad, I serve you. The son chose to say to his dad, I wish to remain with you for the rest of my life. The son freely, willingly chose it to be with his dad, serve his dad and love his dad. Now in this and this only, the father can say, I am glorified because nobody forced my son to say this to me or do this for me. I've told you this true story. I'll, man, I'll share it again with you. This priest went and visited this man who was one of the richest men in that entire country, a multi-billionaire, not a millionaire, a billionaire. Man, I, I, I want to find out his address. <laughs> He went and visited this man who was married and had children. And he said, I was, we were sitting outside of his mansion. And then I'm looking at the man's face. The smile cannot leave his face. There was a huge smile on his face. Never seen it before. It made me curious. So I asked him, I said, so and so, can you please tell me what is the secret behind your huge smile on your face he said father leave me alone you have no idea what put this smile on my face he said what is it he said father it's this shirt that I'm wearing he said I looked at the shirt maybe the best I could say it's worth a hundred dollars this man can make a hundred thousand shirts out of gold Is that rich? The shirt was normal, ordinary shirt, 50, $100. He said, the shirt? What do you mean? Please elaborate. He said, Father, you don't know what happened today. My son, he started working. And the very first pay he received, he thought of his dad, of me. The very first pay he received in his entire life, he went, the first thing he did, he bought his dad a shirt. You see, Father, this shirt, I will never ever replace it with all the wealth I have because this shirt is the thought of my son, is the love of my son for his dad. This shirt is the most precious, expensive thing I have ever received and owned in my life. My son thought of me. My son loved me. My son bought me a shirt. Wow. I'm glorified because my son did it freely, willingly, with love. This man is placed for the glory of God. Now, for God to be glorified, he needs to be the father. And for him to be the father, he needs to send his beloved son. Through his son, he makes us sons of God. So that way, when we are made sons of God through Jesus Christ of Nazareth, holy baptism, one of the seven sacraments, Jesus, our Lord, adopted us to be sons of God through the holy baptism. When he made us to be sons, son now is free. Son now is, has the choice to make 
a decision. He is free. He is not forced. He can remain with his dad or otherwise he can go to church or to the club. He's free. He can do whatever. He can pray or swear. But when the son comes and says, Dad, I chose to come to you, not to Satan's house, the club. I chose to come and pray for you and pray to you not to go and mix with this world. I chose to be in the church, not in the streets of this world. Lord, I chose to be with you. I made you my portion because I freely wish to be with you, Daddy, for the rest of my life and forevermore. Now, God is glorified. And when was God glorified? When the blindness was removed and the man was able to see once again. But who opened his eyes? Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of God. How did he do it? He spat on the ground and made mud, a clay, and he applied it to that blind man's eyes. Clay, what is he trying to say? I am your creator. Your former Adam, your first father, I made him out of clay. And out of clay, I can make eyes when they are missing. I can make eyes when they are missing because I am the creator from the very beginning. So when I opened your eyes, I gave you my knowledge, not the world's full of evil and satanic knowledge. No, I give you my pure, holy, exalted, elevated, enlightened knowledge, truth, not lies. And when I give you the truth, your eyes will be open. And when I opened your eyes, you are now the child of God. So now when you say, dad, I love you. When you say to God, daddy, I love you. Daddy is glorified. In our church prayer life, there are certain Psalms we recite very late at night, early morning. The very first Psalm, we begin the early morning prayer, the very first Psalm. I'll say it in Aramaic. Shabbat al Maria Tishbukh Taghdatta. Praise. In English they call it praise, but Shabbat Tishbukhta is glory also, not just praise, but it's glory. So give glory to the Lord, a new glory. It's a new glory. When did this new glory begin to the Lord? When Adam was created, because Adam, the former Adam, was the son of God. So when Adam said to God, I love you, God was glorified. But when the former Adam fell and broke God's word, that glory was stripped of God until the latter Adam was born in Bethlehem. What did the angels say the very first thing to the human race? Glory to God in the highest. Oh, why glory? Because the son is given, a child is born. The son has come to make you once again sons of God because then and then only the glory is given back to God the Father. So if you say, I believe in God and I'm his slave, <laughs> you're doing neither God a favor nor yourself. What is the use of a slave? Shoot. There's no use. What slave? But this son who was made by the grace of God and God became my dad. When this son comes and says to dad, I wish, I wish to work for you. I choose to serve you. We are no longer now slaves. We are servants as children. Now this is a, even a higher level than just being a son. Imagine this with me. I know I've taken too long and I love it. 
Let's say God made me his son, but I never serve him. What's the point? No, it's good to be his son, but it's much greater being the son and his servant. When you go to God and say, Dad, I'm your son and I'm here to serve you. As the son, willingly I choose to serve you. Now this is a greater rank and a greater position than just being a son. Because son alone is good, but not good enough until the son becomes the servant of his dad. Then he is showing daddy true love. True love. Children, listen to this. No matter what we do for our parents, we can never pay them back. You know why? Because parents have done one thing for their children, nothing in this realm can pay back what they've done for their children. What have they done? They have given their life for their children. When I go to my dad and my mom and I give them money and I whatever I do for them can I make them 21 year old again no even if you go to Istanbul Turkey and I in your face and Botox your mm, you ain't gonna be that 21 year old get on with your life face reality you're old like me ho 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 Merry Christmas. I'm already sent. <laughs> no matter what we do for our parents, we can never bring that life which they have sacrificed for us. But one thing, we will pay them back every pain, every sorrow, every tear, every sacrifice they made. We will make those parents forget about all their long, many years of hard work. We'll make them forget. When I go as the son, as the daughter, I go freely, willingly, with a smile on my face. And I go to my mom and dad and I say, Mom, Dad, I just want you to know one thing. I love you. And the parents forget all their pains and suffering. I love you. They feel glorified. My hard work did not go in vain. I got rewarded for it. My child respects the sacrifice I made for him and for her. You see the parents, they say, you've paid me back, my child. I don't need anything, nothing from you. You already done it. One word, love. All capital letters, L-O-V-E. Love. Love one another. In this, the world knows that you are my disciples. Wow. Love. But not any love. Divine love. Heavenly God, God's love, the Father's love. We need the Lord. To my beloved sons and daughters, do not fall for the traps of this world and the temptations of this world. Don't let anyone direct your destiny. Control your destiny. Don't let anyone just call you and say, what are you doing? And you say the magical word, nothing. Can anyone actually explain to me, what do you mean by saying I'm doing nothing? It doesn't exist. You must be doing something. At least you've been thinking. Or were you sitting without a thought? No, you were thinking. So you were doing something. So what is this nothing? Get rid of it doesn't exist so don't speak nonsense what are you doing thinking of you baby are you available knock 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 I'm already here baby that's before marriage after marriage
not again that noise, pollution. Just kidding. <laughs> Those who are married are saying, yeah, I, I learned it, but it's too late, Father. <laughs> Do you have any divorce offices somewhere here? <laughs> I've got them in Fairfield, near the city. <laughs> yes. Love one another. In this, God is your dad. And you are his child. Love one another. But the love that came through Jesus Christ, not any other love. He is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. He's the only one. Say, Lord, I'm sitting on there at the wayside waiting for you to come. Please, Lord, I'm blind. I can't find you. You find me, Lord. And next time you walk by me, don't pass without stopping. I'm begging you, Lord. I can't see in order to say, Jesus, stop. And since I can't see, I don't even know what Jesus looks like. I have no idea who you are. I've been so distant. I've been blinded by the world. I've been living in the world for the world for too long, for too many years. I am a total stranger to you, Lord. I don't know, even if you pass me by, I would not even differentiate you between any other human being. But Lord, you know me. So you stop and call me and say, you are here for the glory of God. I'll put mud on your eyes. And I'll ask you and I'll tell you to go and wash in that pool called Shilucha or Shiluha in the proper Hebrew Aramaic pronunciation. Shilucha means the messenger. That pool of water is Christ himself. Wash in it. Be baptized in Christ. You who have been baptized into Christ have put on the Christ. Galatians 3.27 Baptism gave me a new spiritual eye. It opened my eye. It was blinded by Satan, by my sins, by the temptations of the world. Lord gave me a new birth. But this new birth came from above the stand, from above. Different knowledge, different comprehension, different application, wisdom. But are you willing until your eyes are opened? Are you willing to walk the distance for your Lord? Just leave you with this. This man looks like was an adult past his 30s, maybe early 40s. The people of his town knew him very well because they would have seen him every day sitting at, that, uh, at the gutter of that road every single day begging. Yeah, they knew him very well. For the first time ever, they see him with mud on his face. Who does this? Either one of these two, either a little child who knows, does not know any better. They play with mud and put it on their face. But an adult putting mud on his face, it, it can only signifies one thing. He's lost his mind. The Lord put mud on his face and said to him, walk through your town and go and wash in that pool. When he walked, I'm sure, People would have made fun of him, would have laughed at him, would have ridiculed him, would have told him off, would have made all kind of gestures and nasty words. But it did not matter to him because what mattered to him was one thing. Today, I will see the Lord if the whole world persecutes me. Are you willing to have the mud created by the Lord on your face and walking in the midst of the people of this jungle called the world because they will devour you. Are you willing to go the distance for your Lord? Are you willing? That mud is, they will call you sick in the head. They will call you judgmental. They will call you discriminative. They will call you, you are out of your mind. Look at you, who do you think you are? Do you think you're someone special, someone different? And the most painful of all statements will come from within your own family circle. 
The moment the Lord opened your eyes, your own family will disown you, will ridicule you, will persecute you, and they will cast you out and say, he is out of his mind. He's lost his head. He's sick in the head. He needs to go to Liverpool Mental Hospital. But blessed are you for carrying the cross and enduring the painful process till your eyes are fully open. But guess what? When you walk the distance, when you trust in the Lord, and when you leave everything in His capable hands and say, I'm walking even if the whole world sh shreds me to pieces, I'm walking, Lord. I will see you. I will see you. I don't care because I didn't come for the world to love me. I came for you to say, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Wow. I walked. When my eyes opened, they cast me out. Who found me first? God. God as the son of man. Do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, Lord, for me to believe in? It is he who is speaking to you, who opened your eyes. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You're my God. I bow. I praise you. I glorify you as the son. And you're my dad today. I'm your son. I glorify you and I worship you, dad. I love you. I love you, Jesus. Let the whole world hate me. As long as you love me, that's what matters. Church leaders, don't seek thrones. They're temporal. Seek the Lord. Don't sit in limousines and walk on red carpets. This is all vanity of all vanities. Seek the Lord and be his donkey. Let the Lord ride you and navigate your way in this, in this world until he brings you home safe and sound. Let the Lord. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy and mighty name. I want to dance with this body, yeah, yeah. I want to feel the heat with this body. So I'm correcting uh, Whitney Houston's lyrics. It's not I want to dance with somebody. No, no, I want to dance with this body. You need to specify because somebody could be Satan. <laughs> but when it's this body, it is identified. I belong to Jesus' world. So you can't. You can't deceive me with your lies, for my Lord opened my eyes and I can see your deceptive ways, Satan. It wasn't me, it was the Lord. When he opened my eyes, I could see you, Satan, very clear. Corona, evil, lies. Climate change, lies. Be careful with this AI thing. Don't go too far with it. Very dangerous toy. Please don't. You'll be playing with fire. And I have one rainbow that is in heaven. The promise of my heavenly father, I will not bring flood anymore to this face of this world. That is the only rainbow I know. I don't know any other rainbow. I love everyone. I pray for everyone but not on the account of my Lord Jesus, over my dead body. Let's bow our heads, my beloved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace and instill the works of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. 
Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith and the adoption as your children and the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus forgive us all and make us worthy to come forth and receive him in the truth, the true body, and the true blood, the Holy Eucharist. Also, in this Holy Mass service, we are remembering our beloved, the departed souls. Um, today, Sunday, the 6th of August, 2023, in today's Holy Mass service, a special petition prayer was said for the blessed soul of our beloved, the late Jacqueline Abiad, who departed from this earthly life to her eternal resting place among all the saints and the righteous ones. She departed on Tuesday, the 1st of August, 2023, in the blessed city of Beirut, our beloved country, Lebanon, at the age of 67. Our beloved, the late Jacqueline Abiad is leaving behind three children and two grandchildren, George Abiad and his family, who are here with us in Sydney and her son Michael and daughter Kathy, both in Lebanon. A prayer was also said for the soul of their beloved, the late father, Elias Abiad, who departed 16 years ago. Please join the family in the church hall after the Holy Mass for agape, a, um, a blessing, some food, and the love of Christ. Do not go home. After the Holy Mass service finishes, make your way to the church hall, and uh, we pass our condolences for the uh, family of our beloved, the late Jacqueline Abiyad. May God rest her soul in peace. May God make her in the midst of all the just and the righteous souls in paradise and in glory on his second coming, seated at his right hand side in the Father's house. May God bless you, my dear son, your beautiful family, and all the immediate and extended family of our beloved, the late Jacqueline. May God comfort your troubled heart, increase your faith and love for the Lord Jesus to carry on and move on for the glory of his holy name. God bless you all, my beloved. We'll join you in the church hall straight after the Holy Mass service. God bless. Let us pray, peace be with us. The grace of the Holy Spirit be with you, with us, and with all receive him in the kingdom of heaven forever. Amen. With you, with us, and with all those who receive him in the kingdom of heaven, give glory to the living God. Glory. glory. 